Right, this will show you how to do a double exposure image on Photoshop combining a person, combining model and a background. In my example one here I've got a building behind and you can see the different layers that have gone into it but it was comprised of this image and this image. Okay, so here's how we do it. So you're going to import your first plain picture of your model. I've dragged and dropped it into there, but you might choose to go to File, Open and locate your picture that way. Right, I'd like a little bit more background to my picture, so I'm going to make this a bit larger and I'm just going to use the cropping tool, but instead of to crop, I'm going to pull out the canvas a little bit wider. It's just to change the composition slightly, nothing major. When you're happy with what you're doing, you give uh, it a little tick up there and then those bounding boxes will disappear. So I'm just going to click back on the move tool so that I don't crop anything further. Right, so I'm going to be editing this. I'm going to click on the padlock on the background and just click OK on that so that gets rid of it. Now we're going to choose to um, highlight our model so that we can mask the background because at the minute, although I try to do it on a plain surface, um, it's, it's not as clean and clear as I'd like it to be. So um, something to try first before doing a selection is to try and make the image a little bit brighter so it's got more chance of actually finding the edge well. So I can do this by putting an adjustment layer on, which is the black and white circle down here on the layers panel. I'll just click on brightness and just pop up the brightness just a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to select my edges by using the quick selection tool, which is just up higher on the left. We've got a paintbrush with a little dotted line around it. And that's the quick selection tool. So on this, I'll use my brush to select my model. If I want a bigger brush, I can go on the square brackets and go to the one on the right to make it larger, the one on the left to make it smaller, or essentially the sizing is up here. I can change the size up there. So I'm selecting and it's intuitively picking up my model and not the background. This is because I've got quite a plain background if I had a fancier background, I would be better off doing this with the pen tool, but that's a whole different tutorial. Right, can you see how it's picked up this area of the background that I don't want? If I want to remove areas of my selection, I press and hold the Alt key on my keyboard and it turns the function into a removal function rather than an adding function. So that's the quick selection tool. Right, my selection is very rough from that. You won't be able to tell at the minute, but it is. So we want to refine the edge. So I do this by going up to the select menu up here. So the select menu deals with anything that has been selected. So anything with the marching ants around it. So I'm on an older version of Photoshop. So I'm going to click on refine edge here. But on the modern version of Photoshop, this would be called select and mask. And the fine refine edge tool is within the select and mask menu. So I'll click on that and I'll go straight in for the refine edge. And I'm not going to change any of those. All I'm going to do is just use my cursor to almost like draw around the edge. And what this is doing is it's picking out the pixels a little bit more detail. So it should be like picking out bits of extra hair, things like that. Maybe I'll go over that edge again. I'm not sure it's picked that out so well. Okay, so if I want to see more clearly what I've actually subject, um, selected, I can change the view mode here. So I could try it like making it black and white, and you can see exactly where my edge is now, or even clearly on that. I'm going to leave it with the marching ants and click on OK. Right, so I've got my selection there. I don't need this brightness contrast layer anymore because that was just to help you find the edge. So I'm going to just drag that into the trash can down there. And what I'm going to do on here is 
So I'm going to create a layer mask so the mask hides the background. So I've got my selection, so and I'm clicked on that layer. So I just find the layer mask tool, which is down here, which is like a rectangle with a black block in it, a uh, black circle in it. So you can see it's masked off the background and I can't see that anymore. So I'm going to add in a new black block colour background for this and I'll find that on the adjustment layer again, the black and white circle, and we can see solid colour. I've got white colour, click OK, there we go. But I can't see my image anymore. So um, Photoshop shows whatever's on the top of these layers, pop this layer pile, it'll show that at the top. So I should just move that underneath there and then my model will come through again. Right, so what I need now is a photo to blend through onto her. So I'm going to pick up this one of the field, just drop it on. So because I've just dragged and dropped it in, it's come up with the bounding box to change the size, which is like transforming it, like Command T. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Shift as I'm moving it so it doesn't um, warp it too much, otherwise it will go like that. So pressing Shift, and you see it's just sprung straight back out like that. And there we go. And I'm going to tick that it's OK. I want that to be above her, so I'm going to move that, drag it up there. Now I can't see her face for the moment, so I'm just going to lower the opacity. And I want to position where I want these flowers to go. And I kind of feel like I want them to be a bit bigger down here. So if I want to change the shape of this picture again, I can press on Command T. I can drag down a little bit there and it hasn't distorted it too much. When I'm happy with that, I click tick. I'm just going to move it back up a little bit more so I have more of these plants in her hair. Maybe Command T again for me. Move down again. Okay, tick, happy, raise the opacity back up so we can't see again. Right, so I'm going to put a layer mask on this one now, but first actually I want to clip it to this layer down here so that it's attached to the mask layer. So I'm going to go right click and create clipping mask. And can you see it's attached it with this little arrow here, but it's also taken the form of the mask of this layer because it's now joined together. I'm going to give this one its own layer mask as well so that I can edit and remove some parts of it and that is, I've just got to make sure I'm on that layer selected and then back down to the layer mask option which is the rectangle with the black circle inside and I'm going to edit in there now. So what I need to do to edit in here is, because it's a mask layer, I'll pick up the paintbrush and I'll be able to like, use black to add or you flip to white to remove selections, so, not selections, colours. So I want to make sure that my opacity is high on my brush, but my flow is lower. So my flow, I want to be at something like 50. Can I get that there? Yeah. Right, I'm going to make my brush a little bit larger as well. And I'm going to try using making sure it's on black, going over her face to get the, her facial features back into the image. So the use of that flow being lower now has given me a softer edge as well. Maybe I'll have a little bit of her hair on the front showing through there. Am I happy with that? I think roughly at the minute. So you can see on the mask where I've painted, it's essentially it's blocking part of that image off her face. That's what that, that black patch is. Right. Okay. I don't want her face to be in full colour at the minute. I want it to be black and white. So I'm going to click on her, go on the adjustment layer down here. So the circle, the black and white circle, and just click on a black and white adjustment layer. So you can see her face is now black and white on there. Right, another thing I want to do now is I feel like the colours are too bright, so I want to even them out a little bit more, make it look more monochromatic. So I'm going to click on the top layer, 
and I'm going to choose another adjustment layer down here called gradient map. So at the minute it's just come up with whatever the default there was. So I've got actually an inverse picture. So I'm going to click on that to give me more options. And you're looking for the presets that are called photographic toning. So the presets are found on that little star or cog next to the options, photographic toning. And then when I click on them, I get these more monochromatic images. You flick through, see which ones you like. Some are more graphic than others. Some have got a few more colours in them. Some are more subtle. I'm quite liking the ones with a, a grey slash kind of sepia tone to them. Which one do I prefer the most? Mm, choices, choices. Maybe that one. So I'll OK that. This is now quite stark against my white background. So what I'm going to do is click on the white background and I'm going to pick one of the lightest colours from my image, maybe not that one, to go as a background. Maybe is that, is that lighter? Yeah, that's lighter, so we've got more contrast there. Okay, so and to make sure that um, what happens next. Ah, I know what I can do. I can add another adjustment layer. I'm going to do this with uh, curves and I'm going to put in a slight S into this curve. So it, you see it's raising it, making it lighter there on the highlights, but down here on the shadows, it's pulling them down darker. So I'm getting a little bit more contrast. Okay. And then the next and probably the last thing that I'm going to do is on the background layer that's on there, I'm going to change the blend layer to lighten. So I'm getting, you see, a bit more of her hair through there. If I just change that back, you can see, so from that to lighten, I just see a bit more of her hair, a bit more of that shirt. Now I'm almost really happy with this apart from this kind of blocky line over here. So I can see how I can get rid of that maybe actually because it's on that mask there. I can click on that mask of her head where the line is cut off and I'm going to try, is that adding? Oh no, that's removing. So let me go back on that step backwards. Click back on her. There we go. So with the white, so it's adding to the layer mask as opposed to removing. Although I think I've added a little bit too much there. So if I click back to that, and maybe if I make my brush a bit smaller, there we go, got rid of that. And actually, can I tidy up anything else whilst I'm here? Are there any edges from my selection that were picked up a little bit too much? I think that's generally okay. So. There I've got my image, I'll make sure that I save it. So save as, we'll need to keep it as a Photoshop file. So I'm gonna call that JT Sepia Blend. And I will do a quick, for our Google Slides, I'll do another quick save as, oh, still saving, mistake, mistake. I'll do another quick save as, uh, JPEG so I've got a flattened version of it too that I can more easily share on social media and on Google Drive so that's my finished picture hurrah <laughs>